Hey there, this is Perch, and you might notice that that's Maroon 5 there in the background. And you might be thinking, is he drunk? Well, no, but there is a reason. So let's get into it, shall we? All right, so <laughs> I don't like Maroon 5 at all. <laughs> I don't know about you, maybe. Well, clearly some of you do because it, they, keep, they keep selling things, but uh, holy crap, it's terrible. Um, anyway, um, so I, I'm using this to be illustrative and I wanna tell you about something I do that you might think is crazy, but it, it helps me and I wanna explain why. So uh, periodically, about once every four months or so, I will go to iTunes, rest in peace, and I will look at the top 10, top 20 uh, songs in just kind of overall, which these days generally means pop. Um, and I will buy them. I'll download those 20 songs and I will throw them onto the iPod that's hooked up to the car and I'll listen to them. Not a lot lately, but I will, I will listen to these songs. And what I'm trying to do is remind myself what is popular. I'm trying to remind myself, what are people buying? Why is this hooking on with people? And I ask myself as I'm listening to these things, what is it that's uh, that's catching people? What is it? Is it, you know, the, something the singer is doing? Is it the way the song is constructed? Why why is it that this thing is popular? And in some songs like, like this one, um, it's quite difficult to figure out why it's popular. And, um, and I'll subject myself to this kind of over and over a few times. And then at the end of the year, there's this guy, uh, DJ Earworm. If you've never heard of him, I recommend going to check him out. He takes all the popular songs and he mashes them up into kind of one big pop mashup song. And I, I love that because he's saving me a ton of time. He's just getting all the hooks into one song. Um, but it's really, really helpful to get your give this perspective of yourself, of, of here's what's going on. Now, you might say... I don't need that perspective. That's a, that's a waste of my time. And it, and depending on what you do for a living and kind of where you are, uh, holy crap! I, the this song uh, uh, by Maroon Five has a little insert by Cardi B that is like, it's it's like two bad things put together into one bad sandwich. <laughs> I mean, ah, uh, Jesus. Anyway, um, so what does this have to do with comics? Well, uh, you probably have guessed by now that uh, if you're selling comics or you're commenting on comics or if you're trying to figure out the comics industry, it's, uh, I gotta turn that down. It's particularly helpful to know what the market is is doing and know what is popular, even if you don't like it. And it doesn't mean, if, as a consumer, you know, you don't, you shouldn't just buy all these things. I'm not asking anybody to waste their money, but it's important to kind of turn off that critical side of your brain for a moment, the part of you that says, I know what I like and what I don't like. And, try and understand what the rest of the world likes because chances are it doesn't align with you nothing ever aligns with you perfectly but learning about this and exploring it is helpful it's helpful to gaining perspective and if you're a comic creator it's especially helpful to understanding um, kind of what the what the market looks like um, all right so now we're on to Justin Timberlake um, anyway <laughs> <laughs> this is really the seven levels of hell. Um, but I really, really recommend uh, doing some exercise where you step out of your own likes and dislikes and you really try and understand what's going on in the market. Even if you're going to create a comic or you're going to review a comic, um, it makes you stronger if you can do so from a perspective of understanding what what is popular and why that doesn't relate to you. A lot of reviewers make this big mistake of they, they will talk about a comic just from their perspective and they'll miss kind of the bigger picture of why the comic was popular in the first place. And so the review gets weakened as a result and it loses credibility. And this is true if you're doing a formal review in a blog or if you're just typing away on Twitter and you're going, I hate this comic so everybody else must hate it. Um, I noticed a lot of that with uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, by the way, if this is not the most surreal video for people, I, the, the background music, the music does not come through as clearly, I know, so maybe this is me torturing myself more than more than you guys, but uh, with Captain Marvel, there were so many people who came in on that thing saying, this movie's trash, I know it's going to be trash, I'm going to hate it, I hate Brie Larson, I hate it, I hate it, 
And then the movie, you know, got out to the theaters and it started making a lot of money. But a lot of people had, had gotten so far into that bubble that they could not accept that it was making money. So then comes the, well, you know, Disney just faked the numbers and then they, they did this this shady thing and this shady thing. And then they, they put pressure on Rotten Tomatoes to do this and that and this. And it's like, at some point you have to say, whoa, buddy, just stop for a moment, take a step back. Hey, some people went to watch this movie and uh, and they liked it. They clear it. So because repeat business on Captain Marvel was, was decent. Uh, from if you look at the numbers and you look at the stats that the theaters pull out, there was a decent amount of repeat business, more than a lot of other Marvel movies. Why? Why do people go back a second time? There must be some reason. And again, I say this from the perspective, just like uh, Maroon 5, uh, that was a movie I thought was pretty bland. It wasn't, I didn't think it was awful. I didn't think it was good. I thought it was just kind of there. And, uh, and yet, a billion dollars is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, to the contrary, uh, there are people who would, who have uh, killed for a tenth of that, for a hundredth of that. So keep in mind, uh, you know, it's important to understand people like things you don't. And sometimes it's a good exercise to listen to really crappy music or read a crappy comic. And before you just move straight into roasting it or ripping it or trying to make little funny jokes about it, try and figure out why, you know, the Avengers, uh, it doesn't sell as well for Marvel as it should, but it does sell. Oh, thank God. The, the car just saved me. It just like the car <laughs> committed suicide and just, just gave up and stopped the whole, the radio. <laughs> It's idle for a while, so the car's like, all right, you must you must be asleep. I'll just shut myself off. But it feels like my friendly car here, my buddy, is like, uh, all right, enough of this music. So anyway, long story short, um, it's good to immerse yourself in things that are not for you. Uh, not all the time, not even a, a tenth of the time, but from time to time, because it gives you a deeper perspective of what's going on. And that's helpful. That's incredibly helpful. Uh, it makes you more well-rounded. It makes your arguments a lot more powerful when you go in to talk about these books and these things. So that's my pitch for you. That's my trick. So I think this is something you can replicate yourself. I highly recommend it. Uh, it can be expensive. So, you know, find ways to do it that are not stealing or pirating. Uh, but, you know, find ways to to immerse yourself in some other stuff. There's some enough previews and enough other comments. The trick is, before you look at any of this, be able to put yourself into, this is going to sound very uh, contemplative, this is the Zen perch, put yourself in a, to a meditative state, a Zen state, where neither good nor bad affects you and penetrates into your soul. And then pick up some of those Marvel comics and try and enjoy them. <laughs> Sorry, no, not try and enjoy them. You actually not, are not trying to enjoy or hate anything. You're just reading it and you're asking yourself, some people read this. Why? Pick up that, you know, ask the store owner. I'm sure they'll let you at this point because they're not moving off the shelves. Say, hey, can I just spend like two minutes uh, reading Man Eaters and trying to figure out why people like this at all? And uh, chance our store owner will be like, yeah, go ahead. Nobody nobody else is buying it. And, and just read it and be like, okay, why does this appeal to, you know, not too many people, but why does this appeal to anyone? There must be some reason. And And take that little nugget of knowledge that you obtain, tuck it away, when you're making that review, making that argument on Twitter, making that comic book, whatever it is, now you have another little bit of insight into perhaps how you make a stronger product or sell a stronger product or sell more products or whatever you happen to do. There you go. Or if you want to do it with music, you know, go for it. But I, I will warn you, there's some times, what was it? I think 2017, there's one year where it's like, I, I've, I've got to stop this. There's just no more. You know, I, I usually am able to find the good in everything, but... Uh, Holy crap, I, there's some, uh, the Lord is testing me. <laughs> there, there you have it. Um, hey, hope you enjoy this. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification. Call me a moron in the comments. I'm good for it. Um, uh, follow me on Twitter, Comic Birch. Tell me your tricks. Uh, maybe your trick is just screw all that noise. I'm just going to like what I like, and I don't really care. My bubble is, is comfortable. It's cozy. I'm going to live in it. It's good. That's okay, too. Thanks for listening.